revolution is coming. My name is Grady Hardiman. I'm head athletic trainer at a small college in Virginia called Hamden Sydney. Today is a very special day, and not just because of the meat. Loaf. Today is my best buddy's birthday. That's him right there, Walter Sims. Peanut butter pie. Peanut butter pie. Yeah. His friends all call him Shorty. Yeah, boy, I like that. Shorty has Down syndrome. When he was born, the doctors told his folks he wouldn't live past his 20s. Well, that was 56 years ago. Pretty amazing, right? There are so many amazing stories about Shorty, and everyone has their favorite. Like the time he guest DJed on the college radio station, or his induction into the Athletic Hall of Fame. But my favorite has got to be the one about his birthday wish. Shorty takes his birthday very seriously right down to blowing out the candles and making a wish. Now you think about a guy like Shorty, and you think of everything in this world that he could possibly wish for. And this year, his one and only wish is to beat Randolph Macon. It's the first day of training camp for the Hamden Sydney Tigers football team. And for the first time in a long time, expectations are high. It's really exciting, especially all the off-season hype. It's just good getting everybody back together, catching up with summers, and uh, see how hard everybody's been working out and get, get ready for the season. Football has a long and glorious history at Hamden Sydney. The rivalry between the Hamden Sydney Tigers and the Randolph-Macon Yellow Jackets has lasted for 108 years. Around here, we simply call it the game. HSC is the 10th oldest college in the United States and one of only two all-male colleges left in the country. It's a place where values like tradition and honor are still part of the curriculum. This is a place uh, that not only uh, helps instill honor uh, in, in its students, uh, helps those students live by the honor code, but believes very strongly in integrity uh, as well, integrity in all that we do. That statement has, uh, has been very much uh, a depiction about uh, Hampton Sydney College, I think, from its founding days when the first 110 students showed up here in 1775 to begin their uh, academic preparation. You enter as boys and you leave as men. See, I'm a clown. I just feel I am the class. I love the players so much, so dear to me. You know why? I have a grandson of God made me. When I am today, you're going to be 
where I am today. But we've got to come back here. Hey, I'm dedicated what I did on the field and get ready to go to beat them. I love to win the game. We'll be number one. Shorty gets pretty fired up about football season. I feel great this world. I'm a part of it. Shorty is part of a great Hamden Sydney legacy. His brother Scott played here. So did his nephew Brad. But it all started with his dad, Gilman Sims. Gil graduated in 1930 as a record setting student athlete and went on to a successful career as a dentist in his native West Virginia. He married his sweetheart, Julia, and they had two sons. Scott and Walter. Dr. Gill remained active at his alma mater, volunteering as an athletic recruiter. In 1970, he had planned to retire, but Hamden Sidney had other ideas. Lightheartedly, they said his job was a roving ambassador of goodwill. And they said, Gil, we will give you an office, but no office hours. And we'll let you do officially for the college those things that you've been doing all these years as a volunteer. I guess one of the hard parts of all that decision uh, was the fact that Walter was involved in a sheltered workshop in West Virginia. And my mother had had actually been behind getting that started in the first place. She'd gone to the state legislature to actually get money appropriated for the very first statewide programs for handicapped children. And so it was a major decision to take Walter out of that program that they had together worked so hard to found. But they felt like there'd be enough for him to do here that it would be a good trade. And so in 1970-71, in that winter, they came to Hampton, Sydney. Around the same time, the college found itself in need of a new athletic trainer. Legendary Tiger football coach Stokely Fulton was quick to recommend Dr. Gill for the job. Coach Fulton figured that with his love for athletics and his medical background, Dr. Gill would make a great trainer. And he was right. When Dad uh, took the job at the gym, all of a sudden there was ample things for Walter to do. Walter immediately became the assistant equipment manager, helped to hand out equipment and take care of the equipment. Uh, to this day, he still does the laundry down there. Uh, whenever there's a handyman job of any kind, Walter likes to do it, particularly painting. That's one of his big things. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Huh? Just as buttoned it just to handle like you want. Okay. You're good to go. Walter is remarkable, I tell you. He just, just because of the things he can do. He's a wonderful guy, and uh, you know, he's a real good friend, and he'll do anything he can to help you, and he'll do anything for you. Usually he'd be painting the doors inside the gym, but we're building a new weight room, so all the doors are off the hinges. So finding work for Shorty became a dilemma that reached up through the athletic department and all the way to President Boards. They eventually found some things around campus in need of a fresh coat of paint. <laughs> like my desk. Right. Oh, how about that, Walt? The desk looks good, bud. I got it done. I know. Quit. And it's rolling. Oh. <laughs> You're getting smart in your old age, huh? Yeah, I am, like you, oh. fuddy duddy. <laughs> Mom and Dad's fears of, of not having a full busy life for Walter uh, pretty much run unfounded because this has been an ideal situation for him. My dad's not here no more. He, uh, good Lord, take care of him. Not long after Dr. Gill died, his wife Julia's health also failed. Scott was living in Florida at the time, but returned to the family home at Hamden, Sydney to take care of his little brother. Soon after his move, he fell in love with and married Scott Tucker. Yeah, that's right. They're both named Scott. Walter's job at the gym makes him feel good about himself. Oh, man, go to it again. 
I can't get enough of it. All of us are like that. You know, we all need to do something, you know, make a contribution that can make us all feel good about ourselves. And that's important to Walter. I mean, that's his job. That's his that's what makes him feel good about himself. He's much happier when he's doing something and helping someone and, you know, it makes him feel good about himself. But everyone's like that. This is Shorty's family. Scott, <laughs> Miss Scott, Flanoy, Caroline, and of course, Lily. He's like the brother I never had. Walter just, I don't know, he, he brightens up everyone's lives. I mean, just the smiles, he, the hugs. I mean, he's just full of personality. He really is. He'll always make you feel happy. And he, just seeing him and looking at him will make you smile because he's just so full of love and joy all the time. I wouldn't be the same without Walter. He is like a brother. When Flanoy's picking on me, he's the older brother. When I'm picking on Walter, he's the younger brother. Things would definitely be dull around here if we didn't have Walter. One of my Hampton Sydney words that you don't hear every day is ingenuous. And it means childlike innocence. And I think Walter is the absolute personification of someone who is ingenuous. He's always excited when the football team comes back in. I mean, that's, that's his thing. In a sport, not like football is. When the football boys are back, that's when he's the most excited and the team is back on campus. It's a big deal. He counts down, you know, the days to when camp begins. I'm a Lieutenant General of the U.S. Army, retired Samuel V. Wilson. Uh, I am the President Emeritus. I'm currently visiting Distinguished Professor in Political Science and Wheat Professor of Leadership. Football is incredibly important here. Football is the one thing that kind of galvanizes and electrifies the campus in the fall. At the Division III level, and particularly here in Hamden, Sydney, the football player plays with the sheer joy of playing and gets hurt and hangs in there and keeps holding up his end because he's bonded tightly with his teammates. And he doesn't want to do anything that will let them down. So he's motivated to play because he loves the game. And he gives it everything he has because of pride, the fact that he loves the guys with whom he's playing. You got town? Sure. Walter's always been there. He's always been there to, uh, in the weight room, in the locker room, um, always wanting to contribute. And uh, that means a lot to you when you got somebody that's always there. This just one jump on the bag wagon like this year when we're predicted to do well and everybody on campus is pumping their fist at you. He's been doing that when we weren't doing well. So uh, I think that means a lot to the team. What are you doing? Stretching. Facing? Yep. You want to sit down and stretch with us? I think it's great for the team to have someone like Shorty supporting them for so long and it's just it's fun to be around and whenever whenever he's around the whole team seems to be happy, even the coaches. This is head coach Marty Favret. 
We had a couple of tough seasons before Marty signed on three years ago, but coaches really turned the program around. We're even expected to compete for a conference title this season. We look like it's the first day of practice now. Really, all I care about offensively is scoring touchdowns, and if I could do that running over people, I'd probably run over people. We're just trying to get our best players the ball. That's my philosophy. So I figure out who the best guys are, and it's my job to try to get them the ball. I've learned how important um, the football program is to him and, and what value he places in the history of it. He showed us all you know, just how amazing his story is. I think it's kind of, for all of us, it kind of gives us a good balance on life. And it's, uh, you know, a freshman walks in and it doesn't take him long to realize that Walter is sacred ground. I got faith in him. I got faith in my coaches, staff. I'm part of it. I love money so much, like mom and brother and me. Lord, bring us together. We pray that we would glorify you in all that we do. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The season begins in less than a week, and everybody is starting to get a little football crazy. Believe it or not, the college church sees more parishioners on the Sunday before our first game than on Easter Sunday. We want to welcome all of you to this service of worship on what is a very special day for us each year at the beginning of the academic year and at the beginning of the time when the spirits and bodies are quickened in our two communities with the return of uh, college uh, and university life to Hamden, Sydney and to Farmville. Walter is loving and positive. He just has a positive outlook on life, and he makes people smile. Walter belongs to everybody, and everybody belongs to Walter. Thou who hast by the night let us into the light, keep us forever. Construction on the new gym is taking a little longer than scheduled, and it's keeping Shorty from getting his work done. And trust me, you don't want to get in Shorty's way when he's got a job to do. You remember that hit for me? Please? Walter, that's not, it's not his decision. I didn't put it up, Walter. Who did? Uh, somebody that ain't here. Who's that? I don't know. Don't know what his name is. He's over in Dorm C. Who's that in Dorm C? Dorm C. That's a place, building over across the road. I know that. Who's over there? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. His name is Randy something or another. Randy? Mm-hmm. When, what time is Randy coming back over here? I don't know. Hey, Walter, can I talk to you about something? Come over here. Where I do that? I got to talk to you about the plane trip on Friday. Oh, sure. Come on at it. Okay. You want to take this stuff off? So you can paint here? What are you trying to paint? Oh, uh, there? Yeah. Uh, don't worry about that right now. I don't have to do that. I know. You can do it eventually, but they, right now they have to leave this up here. I can't move it inside of it. No. Hold this back. See, they need, to, they need to leave this right here so that people don't walk in that area there. 
But you're going to paint down here, right? Yeah, have to get that done. Now, I, want, I want to talk to you about the plane trip. Go ahead. All right, I want you, all you need to wear is a collared shirt. I know, man. Right. You don't have to wear a tie. Well, I need one for sure. Okay. And um, we're leaving at 6.45. 6. 45 in the morning. 45 in the morning. Can we wake you up? Are you going to be able to get up? You've got to go to bed early the night before. Thursday. What time do you usually wake up? Any time I want to. <laughs> well, you better set an alarm. Well, Scott will wake you up, right? Because we got to catch that plane. What time? The plane leaves at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in the morning? But we're leaving from Raleigh, which is two hours away. How long can you get down there? Two hours and 15 minutes, maybe. So you're going to be with the team. We're all leaving here at 645. You come here for us? Yes, sir. I've done this before. I know you have. Right. Time. You know what? You're going to be with the offensive bus. So you're you're making that bus tank. I don't uh, want to be fighting with Keith on the bus. I know more really about that. Okay. He's a good guy. I played up at Penn State from 1991 through 95 for Coach Joe Paterno. Left Penn State in, uh, drafted in 96 by the Indianapolis Colts. Oh, God. <laughs> I love Walt. I mean, obviously, me and him joke around more than anybody. I and mean, you're my best friend, man. You're my best friend. I, mean, I love you the most. And we obviously get along wonderfully. You know what cheat is, he said? Mm -hmm. What is it? Gum? Not gum. No, no. Gum's down here. Uh -huh. Inside of your cheek? Yeah, right. Well, what about I bit it. <gasps> Bite it. Bit it. How'd you do that? Eating. No. Are you eating eating too work. fast. <laughs> You were shoving down some food. No, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You were mistaking the, the, your cheek for the food. He is one of the guys. Uh, Walter, uh, when you're playing here at Hampton, Sydney, uh, he's, he's that number one fan. Now as a coach, uh, he'll come up here in the office and uh, he'll bust your chops with the best of them. And that's what you know, Walter's all about. You know, we go out there to Meatloaf Thursday and we, uh, you know, we just hang out. And uh, that, you know, Walter's just one of the guys. But you weren't eating. I'm not talking about that, okay? You gonna make meatloaf Thursday? I'm I'm going to go. You gonna go? Meatloaf Thursday. For us, it's the official, unofficial start of the football season. And at under four bucks, it's the best deal in town. Well, they get the meatloaf with the gravy on it, and they get the mashed potatoes, and they get a vegetable and a hot roll and drinks. Football coaches are notoriously superstitious and the Tiger staff is no exception. None of us likes to miss a ritual like me with Thursday. Two tall Jones, you know him? And two tall Jones, played for the Dallas Cowboys, didn't he? How many years? Oh, I don't know that. Why not? Come on, get different, man. Don Meadows. What? He's quarterback. That's a good time for us. We look forward to it all week long. Because Thursday's the hay in the barn. We kinda, we're kind of done. We're kind of wrapping things up. Uh, so it's a good break point in the week. We look forward to going down there and uh, enjoying lunch together. So it's, it's fun. It kind of lightens the mood on a Thursday and gets you through the day. Every year, we all chip in and get Shorty a new game jersey with his age on. And since our first game is in two days, it's time to get him suited up. Oh, yeah. Big guy. Oh. Big guy. But he's Big got for you, Shorty. He's got Shorty. Uh, Oh, all right. Hey, man, I know you're doing it. Hot dog. Who's the number is that? All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You ready for Solani? Solani, here we go. Oh. Officially in season.
gentlemen, um, you know, I know right now, if you're like me, we're sick of practicing and preparing for this game. I got pretty sick in my hotel room. I'm actually pretty sick of the state of Tennessee. But I live for what we're about to do. There's no doubt in my mind we're united. There's no doubt in my mind that we're talented. There's no doubt in my mind that we're pretty special. Best teams wearing white jerseys today. Chris Scott, go ahead. Hey, refuse to lose. We come down here and we get it done today. Refuse to lose on three. One, two, three. Refuse to lose. Go up, go up, go up, go. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, yeah. How about some composure? What the world can't do, man. Come on. Everybody get ready for Titan Live. Come on, let's go. I want to win now, baby. We're killing them, baby. We're killing them. Yeah, that's what I like to hear, show dog. You're right, buddy. Okay, little doggy. Right. There you go. You got to run in there, baby. And that's over. Take it in. Good game, fellas. Good luck to y'all. Good game, good game. Good game. One no, baby. We're gonna keep winning. Okay? What is the record? For wins? Last year. Five and five. How about this year? You wanna go nine and one or ten and up? I take both out. All right, good man. The season is off to a great start, and all of our spirits are high, especially Shorty's. Now that the semester has begun and campus life is in full swing, Shorty is back to making his rounds as the school's unofficial ambassador of goodwill. How you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Any help carrying that? No, thank you. It's, it's not very heavy, actually. Okay, I want to make sure it's not heavy. Uh, no, sir. No, it's hooking back. He's, he's just an inspiration to everybody. To know his situation in life and know where he's come from and to know um, what he's had to deal with. And he really has made his life count. He's making his life count. And with all the young men that's coming in and out of this college, they can take inspiration from him. Take your hand up, little girl. Keep it up, Oh, I will. You're right. You're right. I'll take it off. He's just like a brother. That's as simple as it gets. And I think a lot of students think of him that way when they get to know him. 
and, and around him enough. I know a lot of coaches will feel that way. A lot of people in the neighborhood will feel that way. He's just part of this family, big part of the family. Oh, running for the real What is your what would you like? You got it right there. You want a sandwich? Would you like some chips? No, thank you. No chips? Yeah. You want two sandwiches? Two yeah. up. All right. Here we go. <laughs> T.W. Hey, Noah. Uh, I'm all right, see? Uh, I'm pretty good. T.P.P. all. He's the kind of guy we looked at for motivation and inspiration. At the age he is, it's just, he gives us high hopes. Just makes you, uh, you know, think of what you, what you have and, and uh, be thankful for what you have. He is, you know, a truly special person. I'll see you in practice today. You going to be down there? I'll be there. All right. See you later. He's a good ambassador for the college. Ham Sydney is a very special place. You do, you, you, there's a brotherhood once you get here. You know, there's a there's a there's a brotherhood and a feeling about this place, and he, he epitomizes that feeling. How's it going? Fine. We'll talk about you know what, he'll, he'll talk about the songs you heard on the radio that morning. Uh, we jump on the internet, look up songs. Do what? Do what? Yeah. You just want to look up do what in general? All right. All right. Let's look up. Marcells. Marcells. Yeah, Blue Moon. You look up Blue Moon. You like Blue Moon, don't you? Oh, yeah. People talk about having a passion for things. People don't have a passion for things like Walt yeah. Casper. Yeah. Blue Moon, Marcel's. 61. You sure? Right. I think he's the most awe-inspiring person that I've ever, I've ever met. You know, somebody who, who might not have, have been dealt all the cards in life, but has probably made more out of what his hand was than anybody I've ever been around. We beat Gettysburg and head back to Hamden City for our first home game of the season. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Huntley Stadium and Fulton Field for today's Old Dominion Athletic Conference contest featuring the Quakers of Guilford College and your Hamden City Tigers. Home games are always big events. Students, faculty, family and alumni come together to do some tailgating and catch up with old friends. Bill, Bill, and he playing Brad played here. All right. That's right, Brad and I were roommates. roommates. I, I came down to your house to eat dinner. Yeah, you did. How uh -huh. long ago? Oh, a couple years ago. 81, 82, yeah. 83. That's when I played. 84. Mm -hmm. Those are my years. You know it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the captains are. You know it, don't you? Here are Gilford. Always good to see you, Walter. This is Fulton Field. We call it. Death Valley. Brandon Hamlet, cut 
Uptown, Amden, Sydney. We beat Guilford 38 to nothing, and for the first time in 26 years, a Hamden Sydney football team started the season with three straight victories. You know why? He's the greatest coach in the world. He is the greatest. Because I know I feel in my bones. He's the greatest guy in the world. Man, he's great. I love him. Hey, Shorty, you say win on three, all right? One, two, three. Win! There you go. Woo! Winning is great. When you're winning, the smiles are wider, the portions are bigger, and the desserts are free. Thank you. Of course, the one time Shorty offers the pay, I miss out because I need to get my appendix removed. But nothing will keep me from our next game. It's a big one. The Bridgewater Eagles are undefeated and ranked number one in the conference. If we want the conference championship, today is a must win. If there's one thing since I've been here at Hampton Sydney that gets under my skin, it's the fact that there's a lot of people out there that question your guys' toughness. You guys are the ones that are going to change that image because it's there now. We haven't been able to dispel it no matter how improved we are. All right, they question our toughness. Wanna Bridgewater? You got them right now. On their home place with all this hoopla, it would be the most exciting win in, the, in the, maybe the history of the school. All right. So let's go about business like we know how and let's show everybody how good we are. All right, Reverend Willie. Yeah. Dear God, we already got the team of our life. This may be the game of our life. Keep us cool on the sideline and hot on the field and keep these other guys' butts on the ground. Amen. Amen. Amen.
against the NSF News Ball Game with your final score of Ridgewater 38 and Hampton Sydney 7. Somebody. Right, wrong deck. Okay, we'll Matt's do it. Good. All right, we're going to go to Jim and Sue. That's the end of Caroline Scott. We'll be all right. We'll do okay. I hope you. Sometimes you don't win them all. This week is homecoming. Homecoming is usually a time for friends and family to reunite and celebrate. But not for the Sims. Not this year. This year, Shorty's nephew Brad won't be here for it. I'm gonna take all the nephew I have this world. This Brad. I remember hearing a shot and thinking, well, somebody's up that way. It didn't sound like Brad's shotgun, so I didn't figure it was him. <laughs> But a little while later, I got an urgent call on the radio. You need to get an ambulance. Brad is down. And of course, a cold chill went down my back. I didn't know what Brad is down meant or how serious it might be. But Brad was well camouflaged and sitting next to a tree. And evidently, there was just enough movement from his clothing and so forth that the fellow raised his rifle after about 20 seconds or 30 seconds of being within sight and shot him shot him in the chest with a 30 caliber rifle. And Brad lived maybe 15 minutes, but Brad was dead when they carried him out of the woods. And it was, I guess, the most difficult thing I've ever had to face in my life. And something for it. And I don't think I'll ever ever really get over it. I grieve for Brad every morning and every night. It, it was hard and and continues to be hard. I mean Brad is Brad was really is really missed. He really is. I love him. He little little baby boy. He's going in like a man. He is. He's a big hell. I love him. The only thing I had this world, this brand, no one else. I love him. He was so dear to me. But he's my nephew. And Brad's gone. I don't believe him. I do believe one thing. There's a God up there. I'm talking to you, God. I want to bite here with what I want. <clears throat> Never matter how I feel, what I am feeling. I'm not hurting. Breath up there. I believe that. You gotta go on and live. Ask Shorty what his all-time favorite Hamden Sydney season is, and he'll tell you 1977. It was the last year an HSC football team made it to the playoffs. This homecoming, the 77 Tigers are celebrating their 25th anniversary. And just like back in 77, Shorty's right there with them. One of my haters, he's the greatest linebacker. He is the greatest. He's number one, baby. He is. <laughs> Biggest baby coming out. You're number one. 
you're number two. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He he knows everybody that ever played where they were on the team for two weeks. Yeah, four he does. years. He does. He remembers the number. He remembers what locker they were in. Remember Paul Emery? Hey, Paul Emery, 54. Yes, 54, you got it. You got it. How you doing? He's number eight of six. That's right. He, he never fails, does he? David Allen. That's right. You got it. 53. Did you see Coach Wacker yet today? Oh, yeah. Today, we play against Emory and Henry, led by Coach Lou Wacker. Lou coached at HSC for almost 20 years, oh, and he's one of Shorty's dearest friends. How you doing, buddy? How about you? Great. I think everybody needs to know somebody like Walter. I think Walter helps you put life and football and everything in perspective. We get tied up in, in whether we win or lose, and I think we're all guilty of that. Uh, but Walter, uh, it wasn't about winning and losing with him. It was about the experience and about, uh, he, I think he loved everybody, and I think everybody loved Walter. And I think if you can have somebody around that makes your players and your coaches uh, put things in perspective, I think they're important to your program. Good to see you, Walter. We'll see you later, okay? Coach Lou has plenty of reasons to smile. His team has beaten us 15 years in a row. But I got a feeling that this is our year. Come on! Hey! Maybe I was wrong. At the half, we're down by 10. This is some hard times. Y'all better phone up and play. See who's the man right now. You guys are a freaking team. Play like it. Some guy makes a mistake, help him up. Couldn't even look at 77 team in the f***ing odds. Just the same as us. They just wanted it more. Let's give a warm hand to Sidney Welcome to the 1977 Odak campaign. Good luck, Tiger. I'm a proud of you, Prairie Taylor. We're proud of you, Walter. Odak, coach of the year. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. Lou Wacker, coach of Bobby Taylor. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Very nice. We got to get him and Sydney back together for the second half, don't we? You're right. Payback time! Come on! Yeah! How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? By the time we beat him. Hey, how are you, man? How are you doing right here? All right. You doing all right? Wonderful. Well, that's I'm good. proud. Are you happy? Yeah, I am. I thought you would be. What is this, Walter? Buddy. NCAA National Quarter Finalist. And the boys gave it to you? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Aren't you thrilled? Oh. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That's great. That's really nice. We came together as a team, and we won. One, two, three. Isn't that great? Do you think he's happy? We knew it. Yeah. We did it, didn't we? <laughs> His music is one of the most important things in his life to him. I mean, he's listened to the radio, he's listened to these DJs, and this was his time to shine, and he was going to be one of them. Yeah, it's kind of like getting on American Bandstand when you were in the 50s, you know, dancing with some 
some girl, you know, you think, wow, this is cool, you know, but uh, who gets to do that? What cyclist won his third tour right, in 1990? Are you going to take calls on the radio show tonight? Yeah. 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 Big time. What come to any problem? Where are you going? Is it all the campus? Passing yeah. On the the headset first on? Series of That's right. I've right. done it before. Yeah. 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 See, Walter's going to be on the radio tonight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I am. What's the station? 92.1? <laughs> <laughs> right Nobody I know loves rock and roll like Shorty does. His record collection is legendary. Name a song from the 50s or 60s, and I'll bet you Shorty can tell you who sang it and what year it came out. The only thing Shorty loves as much as listening to music is talking about music, which is why the college asked him to host his own radio show. The first song I played, Thank You and Alone, Big Show Turn. Larry the King from 1963. Speedo, the Cadillacs, 1956. Long Beach, Duke Bill, Gene Farner. You were tuned in to WWHS. We're here with good buddy Walter Sims. Walter's going to be here all evening. Walter, I've got to ask you, you're 55 now, but uh, I'm telling you, come the, what was it, the 14th of November, all that, was it the 16th of November? All that's going to change, isn't it? You have a birthday coming up, don't you? That's right, 14th. Yeah, the 14th. Now, something's, something's happening that week. Randolph Macon game is that week. How do you feel about that? Your birthday, the same week of the biggest game, probably. It is the... biggest game. You know <laughs> I believe that. Yeah, you know what. I've got to ask you, what do you want for your birthday? I want to be right off me. <laughs> <laughs> the one way I would end up describing Walter is I think a lot of people may be fearful to speak to him, a little hesitant, because he does have a disability. Uh, but for me, he doesn't have a disability. He's got a gift. And I think anybody that's ever come across him definitely thinks the same thing. You're the greatest guy in the world, man. I appreciate this. Thank you. I love you so much, I mean, but you know, you've never changed. I care so much about you. Anything happening next weekend? That gives me a horn of fame. That's what I heard. <laughs> I'm about to come down for that. If anybody deserves it, you've been here longer than anybody. Here, That's so. right. There are few greater honors a Hamden City man can achieve than induction into the school's Athletic Hall of Fame. Just the other day, Shorty received a letter containing some wonderful news. This is so special. You know what's right it's so special? It is me. I'm a big close to my dad. I go to be reunited. Hall of Fame. Inductive into Hall of Fame. That's the proof right here I got. It's evidence. I want to be close to my dad. I go to me. Be with him. I'm gonna be with him now. My dad, 
And it's you. I'm not sure I cry. My eyes does that all the time. I'm not sure I cry. Got deep emotions in me. I'm honored, proud. The men in this school are part of it. I care about this school. You know why? People care about me, look out for me, help me out, and get help me out. I want to be a player in this school. I'm honored. That's it. In Hall of Fame. Shorty was a little nervous about giving a speech, so he asked me to help him out. Now they just gave you your award. Now comes the easy part. You might. I know. I got butterflies in my stomach. You got butterflies in your stomach? Yeah, you are too. Well, just relax. Remember, everybody's there to see you. You're the star. Just say what you feel. Don't worry about what's on here right now. Just say what you feel. If somebody gave you a very, very nice gift, what would you do? Thank him. That's exactly right. Man. So go ahead and do that. I'm on an acceptance award. I thank my mom, my dad, my mom, Caroline, no, 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 no. My brother. Yeah. My brother. No way in Caroline. Oh, shoot. It's all right. Tell you what, is this confusing you? Is this confusing? I don't know. Okay. Tell you what, let's just, let's put this down and you just tell, just, just act, just, just tell us how you feel about getting the award. How do you feel about getting the award? Wonderful. It makes you feel good? Proud. Well, you can say that. I feel proud. I feel wonderful. I'm a proud, wonderful. I get thanks the board. Me. They got quiet down right there. That's right, don't they ignore them. <laughs> I can't do it again now. That's right. They they won't they, they won't be here on Saturday. Don't worry about them. They won't be here on Saturday. I can't do it again for me out there. Making a lot of noise? Yes. Well just ignore act How? Like, act like you're not there. That's impossible. Are they distracted? Yes. I can't attract me. That's all right. You're doing good. You, oh, wonderful. You were doing wonderful. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it, right? You're doing, you're, you're doing just fine. I can't think. I'm honored. Thanks, the Lord. Thanks. My mom, my dad, my brother. That's right. Scott. Caroline and Pernoy. That's it. That sounds perfect. You did good. You're, I'm telling you, you're doing very well. You're always praying for me, buddy. Thank you. I'm so praying for you here. I appreciate that. Oh, you're going to do good. I know you are. Well, Walt, let me ask you this. How are you going to wear your hair Saturday? Toupee. You got a toupee? <laughs> <laughs> Very few people are elected to the Hall of Fame in Hampton, Sydney. That's just a, a quite an honor. Walter knew that he had accomplished something like his dad accomplished something. His dad was elect, inducted into it. And he just, he thought that was the greatest thing in the world. That he was like his dad. So it meant everything in the world for him to be inducted. All right, put your pants on sport. I'll be back in a minute. Your pants on that arm. Got to take the trip to your hand. Okay, naughty. You ready to roll, bro? You know what? 
Taco. Anthony's got your uh, got your pad, okay? okay? Tony, I gave it to him, all right? Wonderful. You remember it? I don't buy it, I know you will. All right, go get him. Okay. Get a man of the hour. You know what to do? All right. Hold that for, for that for me. Can I do your speech? You want to try? All right, good luck. Better roll with Yeah. I ain't gonna be mad at Doug yet. You're doing good, man. You know. You're doing really good. Uh, afraid you were not going to get here on time. Oh, yeah. You're going to do just fine, buddy. Okay? I hope. You'll do all right. Just relax. You'll be all right, buddy. Yeah, will. You'll be all right. Hi, Walter. <laughs> there you go. That's another, another Walter. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, 15th Annual Hampton Sydney College Hall of Fame and Induction Ceremony. Those we honor today represent alumni from the 70s, from the 80s, from the 90s. They are a wonder group. I want to thank everyone for this honor. Most of it belongs to the people I played with. This 15th Hall of Fame class is filled with nothing but winners. The true winning team sitting up here today. Because Hampton Sydney is as important to me as anything. It's important to me because of the people. Walter Sims. Walter has been an integral part of this cube. Walter has been an integral part of the Hampton City campus for nearly 30 years. He is a fixture with several different departments on campus, most notably athletics. During the game, he stands on the sidelines as one of the team's biggest fans. Sims moved to Hampton City with his father, Dr. Gill Sims, in 1973. Spent many early years helping his father, who was the first athletic trainer. Walter came entrenched in Hampton Sydney Athletics, touched by all who surrounded the athletic programs. Walter has found time outside of the athletics to become an integral part of the Hampton Sydney community. From his work with the Department of Buildings and Grounds and in and around Gammon Gymnasium, to his helping hand the post office, to his daily fellowship with faculty, staff, and students alike. Walter is an important to Hampton Sydney as the college is to Walter. His undeniable love and knowledge of music from the 50s, along with his candor and sense of humor, have made Walter one of the most unique and beloved members of the Hampton Sydney community. Walter. Yes, you Snapped it. You want to say something? Okay. Give me time. You got all the time you need. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored and reward.
Man. I'm on Jeff the Ward. My dad, my mom. My brother. Uh -uh. Excuse me. My brother, Scott. For Noy. Caroline. Gabby Hunnaman, so good. Marty. Earl Ross. Thank you so much. Except the war. Thank you. So much. Thank you so much. Oh, God. Good We played football that day too. A non-conference game against the Division I AA Davidson Wildcats. We played as hard as we could, but in the end, they were just three points better. But sometimes it's not about winning or losing. Yeah, you did all you could, but you had a hell of a football game. Sometimes there are just more important things than football. Maryville College in Tennessee is the last stop on the long road to the making game. Shorty couldn't make it out for this one, but our number one fan was still rooting us on. Janusi's still on his feet, him side to five, down to the two yard line. Wow. All right, 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 come on, let's go here. All right. Boy, they really had <laughs> set up in 15 to 12. Had the dog lead, but only the same. Had you stopped to think about the fact this whole game you haven't been to, if they lose, it's going to be your fault. Here's Rico. And that's going to be your final score, 51 to 23. And the players are going to shake hands, and you can put them in the book. All right. It's over now. We'll take a two-minute commercial break and come back with the statewide relief post-game show. Bring on Macon. Macon. Four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It is. Especially Macon Wake. to be the most important week of your college football career starting right now. This is the big, big game for our program. We're going to give it everything we have. All right, everything we have, and we got them at home. Let's look forward to that. Let's go. All right, fellas. Woo! Hey, start that focus. Yep. We got to come out for the first play next week. For the first practice, let's get it up. We make it on three. One, two, three. We make it. Big week. It, it is the game. It is the week. You know, people don't even have to know anything about football to get excited about this week. Uh, this is uh, this is a time when really both schools uh, at, at Randolph Macon and at Hampton Sydney get cranked up about their football team. We at WWHS will here tonight help celebrate the 108th year that we've had our rivalry with Randolph Macon. That's right. It's Beat Macon Week. Body for me, the place just really flat out don't like each other. 
you come here and they just kind of ingrain that in you from the get-go, beat making, hate making, and, and I'm sure they're doing the same thing over at their place. You got a birthday coming up, don't you? You're going to come to it. Can I come? Yeah. Be on the Saturday. After the game. After the game. I'll call. Okay. There's a lot of kids playing their last college game that don't want to leave anything out there. I think we have 15 seniors. I think they have uh, 12. So there's 27 guys out there that literally are going to give everything they have. There's two ways it can happen. You can lose the game and go out like that, or you can win the game and go out like that. But regardless, win or lose, you know, you're going out and that's it. If this is going to be my last game, it's, you know, it's definitely going to be the game where I go out and give everything that I've got left. They often refer to it simply as the game. The uh, Latin would say the l l ludus ipsi. Uh, the very game, the game itself, that it's, it's the only one you need to mention. Those of us unskilled or frail untimely can yet with full voices, hands and hearts await at Fulton Field the clarion of victory sweet, the cry of Macon's beat, Macon's beat, grasp their shoulders stout, and hail the heroes of this, our sacred hill. On to victory. Good luck, Doug, all right? You know it. Let's go beat those yellow jackets. Okay, welcome back to Hampton Sydney. I'm Cannon Watson. I'm joined as always by Greg Nash. This is Randolph Macon at Hampton Sydney. The 108th meeting. This is the South's oldest small college football rivalry. Lord, I need you up there. Help us win this game. It's all about our will to beat these guys today. It's all about our will to win eight games. It's all about our will to send our seniors home with a W. It's all about our will to beat these guys on our turf for the first time since a lot of you guys were in grade school. And it's all about our will and our disdain for the idea of anything but that happening. This could be the greatest game we've ever played. 
No more screaming, no more yelling. Beat that ass, baby. Good old ass kicking. Let's get it up. Beat making. Beat making on three. One, two, three. Beat making. Beat making. Beat making. Beat making.
Got his wish, along with a lot of other great presents. Football signed by Steve Spurry. Hey! The Belmont, Skyline, Five Sets. And all of us were there to help him celebrate. Okay. I guess you're waiting on Christmas now, huh? And that is my favorite shorty story. Of course, there's always the one about basketball season. <laughs>